So today I wanted to talk about things that every developer should know about package.json. Now, if you don't know what package.json is, it is the settings file used by NPM, Node Package Manager, that lets you sort of set up and configure your project. You can add scripts in there, you can add dependencies in there, you can uh, define all the version information and names and description and keywords. Everything about your project is defined inside this file. So how do we create one? Well, there's an npm init command that allows us to create the file. This will ask us a series of questions, or if I go dash dash y, it's going to use the defaults. So I run that command, and then if we take a look at this file, here we have the defaults. Now we've got a name. This is the name of my folder. Version is always going to start off as 1.0.0. Description will be empty. Main by default is going to be index.js. However, if you have any other files inside of here, any other JavaScript files, it will take the first file alphabetically and make that the main script. So I don't think I've ever used index.js as the main file in my project, but app.js, server.js, I can create those files first and then they're automatically going to be added in as main. Scripts, I'm going to come back and talk about those. Um, license. Well, if you want a different license and you use a different license every time you build a project, you don't want to manually have to change this. The author information, well, if it's your project, it's going to be the same information every time. So to change these, I know I can change the main by just having a file inside of here, but to change these, there's a command that we can use, which is npm config, and then we say set. So what's the variable I want to change? Well, inside my init file, I'm going to change the license value. I'm going to set that to MIT. Done. Now, what that did was it saved that information inside this npm rc file or dot npm rc file, which is inside your home folder. Whether you're on Windows or Linux or Mac, inside your home folder, that's where you'll find this text file and it will have the things that we're defining here. So npm config set and I want to put an author in there, so I'll say init, undo that, <laughs> down here I'll say init.author. Now author is made up of a bunch of parts, so name is one part. So I can say Steve Griffith, that's been set, and we can say npm config set init author email and URL, so you can enter a whole bunch of things like this. So there's just a dummy email address. Now, if I get rid of my package.json file, so that's gone, and I do the npm init once more with the defaults, what's going to happen, this one's deleted, so I'll get rid of it. What's going to happen now is it's going to use those defaults that I defined. There we go. Oh, and it just put in Steve because when I did the setting here, I didn't put quotation marks around this. So it cut it off right here. With quotes, it would have taken the whole thing. All right, so good to note about that. Now there's another folder inside of here that gets created. When we start adding dependencies to our project, a node modules folder is going to be created, and that's where things will be placed. If the node modules folder exists, before you create package.json, it will look inside there and see what packages are there and it will automatically add them as dependencies. Now, after it's created the package.json file, if I add files, so npm install, let's just say express arbitrarily. So we're installing express, that creates the node modules folder and express and all of its dependencies are inside of here. So all these things that are required and dependencies get added inside here. So there's our express dependency added to the project. Okay, now in addition to this, we've got git. What if I've got a git repo that I'm using for this thing? Now it could be on Bitbucket, it could be on GitHub, wherever it is, we want to add that before we create this. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to delete these things. So packages are gone, my node modules, 
I'll delete that as well. There we go, back to just my defaults. Now I'm going to turn this into a Git repo just to show you that uh, npm init will pick up the Git information too. So if we've initialized our Git repo and we've done a Git remote add origin and I'm using Bitbucket today instead of GitHub partly to show that you can use things other than GitHub and partly because well, <laughs> when I tried to set this up uh, a short while ago, GitHub was having some issues. So I just jumped over to Bitbucket for this example today. All right, we've done our git init, we've set the remote. So here's our, our git file. And in our config file, sure enough, there's the URL. So this has been defined. Great. Now, close this again. If I do the npm init command again, it's going to grab all that information for us. So inside of our package.json, it set the main based on my first JavaScript file. It added the repository information. It took the author and license from my npm rc file, and the home page was also taken from the git information. So all these things are being done for us. Great. Saves me a little bit of time. I can set up the author and license first, and then as long as I create my file and initialize my git repo first, that information will automatically be added to here. Now, scripts. One more thing that I want to talk about. We can add a script in here. I can create one called Steve, and inside of here, we can specify any commands that we want. So anything that could run on the command line, I could say, you know what, I want to run a node script. I've got one g.js. I want to run that script. So this file, it's not doing anything right now. We'll just add a console.log g.js. So we'll write that message out. Now on the command line, if I run npm run steve, that was the name of our script right here. This is going to run this command, which will run the node file. There it is, there's the comment being written out. So it ran my file, node g.js. There was the output, great. Now, practical uses for this. If you've got uh, something like Webpack or other build tools, those can be used here. We can run those scripts to uh, compile our SAS or do some minification on our JavaScript. Use Babel to transpile our script. Lots of things that can be done. Um, Here's one small practical example with git. I'm frequently doing git add and git commit. Now, if I did just this, I've got to escape those things. Now, this is not really a great practice. I'm running the git add command. I'm adding everything inside my folder. I'm running git commit, and my message is going to be updated. But that means that every time I run this command, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm doing an add, and I'm doing a commit, but I'm not giving any details. So while I can do this, it's not a great thing to do as, as a real practice. I should specify an actual message here. So how do I get command line stuff from here? If I wanted to say npm run giddy, that's my script here, and I wanted to pass in a message. So real update message like that. And I want to take this whole string right here and apply that as my commit message. Okay, that's a little bit more practical. That's a little bit more real world. This, this is part of the key right here. So if we add these two slashes or two dashes, Everything that comes after it will be considered arguments that we're passing to this command. Okay, great, but I can't use them within here. But what I can do is if I change this command and I say, you know what, I'm going to run the g.js file. I can do just g or I can say g.js. I can run that command. This part is going to run this command, which will run this, and then all of this stuff will get passed over here as actual arguments to the file. 
And that's what I'm doing inside of here. This process.argv in my JavaScript, my node script file, this is going to be node is going to be the first argument and then g.js, the name of the file. So remember our command is node g.js and then these other things right here, real update message, those are being passed in just like that. So here's the first argument, here's the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. We're getting all of these things. Now, okay, they're being sent in as individual things, but if I just prepare this in a way that I'm accepting there's going to be an array of things passed in, I'm going to concatenate them all together. I'm going to drop off the first two things. I don't need these two parts, but I want the rest of the array, and I'm just going to stick them all together. Well, we can do that. If this is the array, we can say args.splice, and I'm going to get rid of the first two items in that array. Then I'm going to take the string, the whole message, and that's going to be args join, and I'm going to join them together. Now I have a string, which is all of these different commands. And if I write that out, so we'll save that, we'll run this. There it is, real update message. Now I have a way that I can pass that to the git commands. And that's why we need this part right here. With child process in Node, you can extract the exec method from that. Now I can call that exec and whatever you want your command to be, you can pass that in here. So I want to do git add dot and then we'll have a callback function. So I can do that again, git commit dash m. Now I need the message in here. So I'm going to change these to backtick characters so I can embed my double quotes. And here's my string. That is going to be the actual message. We've got the double quotes around the message. And then the callback function down here, function cb. This is going to be passed an error object, the standard out and the standard in, I believe, are the other two. Whatever. Anyway, standard out, standard in. There we have it. And inside of here, if there is an error, in that case, I'm going to write out the fact that, you know what, there was an error that took place. And I'll return from here. Otherwise, it worked and whatever you want to do afterwards. So there's my basic script. I'm going to be running these two commands. I'm passing all the arguments, this real update message or whatever I type, that's going to be passed in and set as the message for the commit command and all these untracked changes here. So if I do a git status, we can see I've got these three files, none of them being tracked. Okay, great. So let's do npm run giddy and then two dashes we need the two dashes to pass stuff in to the npm command and my first real update there we go so we can have issues where both git commands end up running at the same time so node it's trying to run both things, but they're asynchronous tasks. So it's running the ad and then it's running the commit and the commit is complaining because the ad is still running when it's trying to do the commit. So to avoid that problem, what we're going to do is we're going to take this second exec command and we're going to put it inside of here. So this doesn't run until the callback for the first one. So I'll say this is the callback for the ad. And then we'll do another one for the commit. So we've got two callbacks one callback add, one callback commit, like that. And inside of here, uh, callback commit, and we don't need to call it again. We're just going to say console.log done. Okay, so we take a look here. We're bringing in the arguments, splicing them to remove the first two joining everything together as a single string. Then we're calling the add command. When the add command is complete, it's going to call this function. Here's the function that's going to run. It's going to then 
If it worked, call the commit command. When the commit command works, it's going to call this function and it's going to write out done. So we should be able to do this. And there we go. There's our full life cycle. And we have now a functional script that's using command line arguments in our package.json. Now, git's not the only thing that you're going to want to pass arguments to, but it's a good example of what you can do with package.json and npm. All right. Hope that helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.